I wonder if I'll ever be able to do my hair like this without feeling like I'm stuck in some kind of British period drama. Probably not. Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you some autumn book recommendations. Now I will actually be separating my autumn book recommendations from my Halloween reads recommendations so stay tuned for next week when that video is coming. But I've chosen five books which I just think will be perfect for cozying up on a particularly chilly chipper autumn day and are just very atmospheric in their writing. So I do have quite a variety of books here so I'm hoping there will be something for everybody but let's just jump right in. Also it definitely looks like I chose these books based on the covers when you put them all together but I promise I didn't more thought went into it than that. The cover designers just must be great at invoking the autumnal feel. So the first book is one which I raved about quite a lot towards the beginning of the year but haven't mentioned in a little while and that is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This one is a debut novel but oh my goodness I feel like so many people would love this if they just gave it a chance. This one is a young adult urban fantasy book inspired by Celtic mythology and I just love it so much. It's incredible at invoking the dark folkloric vibe, the very atmospheric sense that goes behind all of the actions within this book. And not only that but this does also feature LGBTQ plus rep and OCD rep. So the main character in this, Dana, is very close to becoming a fully fledged witch. However, not too long before this happens, the leader of another witch clan enter her small town bearing death omens. When they arrive a series of witch killings start happening and so this turns into a kind of murder mystery as we're trying to figure out who is killing the witches as well as dealing with the small town politics which go along with it all and oh my goodness this just has that really perfect witchy dark vibe. We have woodland scenes, we have rituals, we have Celtic goddesses, we have a literal string of murders. This just has everything that you could possibly want within an autumnal book. And with this being a young adult book, I felt like the attitudes of the main characters were really authentic and also where their attentions were because not only did we have the fantastical elements to the plot, but we also had them worrying about things like relationships, not in a way which overpowered one or the other. There was a very nice balance between them, but I just found this to be a really engaging read and because of the mystery element, you do just keep reading and spiraling into the story more and more. And before you know it, you're at the end and it's just like, Oh, it was just such a good read. I do think this is an underrated one and I'm sure you guys will have heard me recommending The Ren Hunt, which is another one very similar to this that I would also recommend, especially for the autumn season. But I did that in last year's autumn book recommendations video, so I'm not going to do it again. But if you do like the sound of the Ren Hunt whenever I've mentioned it recently, then this is also a very good choice. Next up we have a historical fiction and I'm not actually sure if I've ever mentioned this on my channel because I can't remember if I was still reading historical fiction when I started my channel or not. I used to absolutely love it. It used to be my favourite genre. I haven't read it for a very long time besides the odd one here and there. But this one used to be one of my favourite historical fictions and would be brilliant to read at this time of year. I'm pretty sure I read it in autumn. And that is The Essex Serpent by Sarah. Perry. This one is set in 1893 and follows a woman called Cora who is left widowed. She moves to the countryside to the small town where there are rumours of the Essex Serpent. Now she's really into science and archaeology and all that kind of stuff so she is really eager to actually look into this folklore and see if there is an Essex Serpent, a real reptile that's just long forgotten. So she ends up getting mixed up in all of these investigations and along the way she does meet a man but there is a lot of tension there because while she is very scientifically minded he is very much a believer that things like hysteria can be cured by faith so they do definitely have that clash in ideologies, beliefs, but it does say on the back that despite disagreeing on everything he and Cora find themselves drawn together changing each other's lives in unexpected ways. I feel like the reason I largely associate this with autumn is because of the setting so this is set largely in the marshes, there's lots of dreariness in the weather, it's very grim and grey and I can just imagine it being a chilly autumn day, that wind really biting your face especially as she's going around these excavations and with that tiny hint of folklore surrounding the entire science behind all of this, the mystery element behind this entire story is just tinged with that slight bit of magic, that slight bit of uncertainty and I do think that it makes for a perfect blend of historical fiction and maybe something else. So even though I haven't read this one in a little while I would definitely recommend it. I'm probably due a reread myself. Give it a go if you are interested. Next up we have a book which I've mentioned a lot on my channel recently but I couldn't not recommend it and that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I had to put this one in this video because I am so motivated to read this book, the Lord of the Rings series, because of it being autumn and the changing of seasons. Something about this epic fantasy adventure is just 
fused with autumn, especially because a large majority of this book is spent in woodland, in the mountains, this big band of characters just traipsing through places like the elvish realm and it's just, it is awesome in a book. So if you don't know what The Hobbit is about, this is actually kind of a middle grade book. It is set for a slightly younger audience but it's not in a patronising way or anything, it's just in a very Fairy tale esque way, I guess, which seems to be a theme in all of my autumn book recommendations, apparently. Fairy tales and folklore is just the essence of autumn for me, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> but this one definitely does read as a combination of fairy tale and epic adventure. But we follow Bilbo Baggins, who is a hobbit, living a very quiet, contented life until 12 dwarves come knocking on his door, claiming that they're taking him on an adventure to go and steal back treasure from a dragon. We have giants, we have wizards, we have elves, we have dragons, we have everything. It's such a good adventure story. Yes, I am going to keep saying adventure because all I've got going through my head right now is Morgan Freeman going, I'm going on an adventure! <laughs> But it is that vibe that's just so heavily infused in this book and it makes for such a fun read. And every single time I even think about reading this book or The Lord of the Rings, which I can't yet recommend because I haven't read it myself yet, but I will be doing throughout the rest of this year. But every single time I just think about J.R. Tolkien as a whole, I just want to go frolicking around woodland. I mean, I want to do that anyway, but just even more so when the leaves are orange and everything crunches under my feet as I do so. I also just wanted to show you these editions which I have because this, this is autumn look at it. <laughs> These are the vinyl bound editions and I just think they are absolutely beautiful. They are mini so this is the normal size paperback so it's not really an edition that is appropriate for reading unless you're sure that you're not going to damage your eyes when you're reading them but I couldn't resist because look at them. Every single time I see them I just imagine tucking them into a satchel bag and going off on a woodland walk so they are perfect. I love them so much. Next up in the recommendations we have a chonker. A very big chonker. This one is almost a thousand pages long but if you're feeling like settling down and taking your sweet time with a read I would recommend Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This is a very very slow moving magician rivalry set on the backdrop of the Napoleonic Wars. It says inside that centuries have passed since practical magicians faded into England's past. Only one remains, the reclusive Mr. Norrell, whose magical powers of conjuring misdirection and resurrection send a thrill through the country. But cautious fussy Norrell is challenged by the emergence of the brilliant Jonathan Strange. Young, handsome and daring, Strange is the antithesis of Norrell and so begins a dangerous battle between two great men whose obsessions and dabblings with the dark arts will cause more trouble than they can possibly imagine. There is so much going on within this book because while it does kind of feel like a historical fiction, because of how detailed it is, this does also have fairies and magical mirrors and just lots going on. I couldn't even begin to explain the plotline any more than the synopsis does because it's just a lot. <laughs> You get a lot of content within this book. It is one which took me a very long time to read. I'm pretty sure I read it over Christmas break two years ago or something. I do remember filming videos with this book, so it is within my YouTube existence. But this is definitely one which you could just hunker down with and get lost in this world, especially because there is so very much of it. Again, it has the fairy tale-esque vibe to it, but in a very dark, creeping way where you don't quite know what's going on. There is this rivalry which makes everything just really tense, especially when there are things like dark magic involved. So while it is a pretty big one, I am going to recommend it, especially because there is a lot of excitement towards her new release, which is Purinessi. Unfortunately, I don't think you can get hold of this cover anymore, which is a really shame because I think this is just beautiful and I really don't know why that's the case because the rest of these editions, the Bloomsbury Modern Classics, I believe you can still get the rest of the books which were released in this series so I don't know why you can't with this one but either way I would definitely recommend it if you're willing to give it a go. And then my final book recommendation is one that's much smaller than that and that is Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan. This is a short story collection which are actually dark retellings of fairy tales. Again with the fairy tales, wow okay. The reason why I'm recommending these ones specifically though is because they all have a very witchy vibe. These are retellings which focus on the heroines of the story and all of them again because of the woodland just remind me of autumn. It's actually split in half so half of them are based in the woodland and half of them are based at sea, hence the title title but I just think this has the perfect atmosphere. They're all quite dark and luring. Juno Dawson uses the word bewitching which I just think is perfect because they definitely lure you in and just keep you within this really almost confined creeping feeling. As well as that this is also an illustrated collection so if I can show you this one for instance it all just adds to the general autumnal vibe and it's a very quick read in comparison to 
my previous recommendation. I read this one quite a while ago now and to this day it still remains one of my favourite retellings so I just wanted to throw this one in at the end and try and push you guys to read it because I don't see too many people talking about this one. So these are my awesome book recommendations as I said. Kind of looks like I chose them based on covers but they're just pretty, I can't help it. <laughs> As always, let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them were if you have, and also let me know if you have any autumnal book recommendations, because I basically live for that kind of vibe. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find links to all of the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media, and other bookish stuff as well, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day, and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!